Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to prefaces of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Buddhist scriptures. Buddhist scriptures. Dr. Zaki Naik. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. Let's discuss the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Buddhist scriptures. Almost all the Buddhist scriptures, they speak about a Maitri to come. It's also mentioned in Chikka Varsunar Setanta, D111.76. It says that another Buddha will come by the name of Maitri, the Holy One, the Supreme One, the Enlightened One, endowed with wisdom and conduct, auspicious, having knowledge of the universe. Whatever he will get from supernatural knowledge, he will preach to the whole world. He will preach a religion which will be glorious at the beginning, glorious at the climax, and glorious at the end. He will preach a way of life which will be truthful and wholly perfect. He will have several thousands of monks as I have several hundreds of monks. This prophecy is also repeated in the sacred books of the East, volume 35, page number 225, that a Maitri will come with such and such criteria and qualities. And further it says that he will be a leader of thousands of people, as I am a leader of hundreds of people. It further mentioned in the Gospel of Buddha, page number 217 and 18, that Ananda, he asked Buddha that, O oh, Blessed One, after you have gone, who will guide us? So the Blessed One, Buddha, he replied, that I am not the first Buddha in this world, neither am I the last. There will be another Buddha who will come, the Holy One the Supreme One, the Enlightened One, endowed with wisdom and conduct, the auspicious, having knowledge of the universe. He will preach a good religion. He will preach a religion which will be glorious at the beginning, glorious at the climax, and glorious at the end. He will teach a religion which will be based on truth and will be a perfect way of life. And he will have many thousands of disciples, as I have only hundreds of disciples. The Ananda asks Buddha, the Blessed One, how will we know him? So Buddha replies, he will be called as Maitri. Maitri means the merciful, loving, kind, compassionate. One equivalent Arabic word is Rahma. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107, illa rahmat lil We have sent thee not but as a mercy to all the world, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of humanity. <laughs> this word rahma, mercy, and its derivatives are mentioned in the Quran no less than 409 times. And every chapter of the Quran, except for Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, begins with the beautiful formula, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. So the Buddhist scriptures, almost all of them, prophesize about the Maitri that is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi to come. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is further prophesied in the Buddhist scriptures, which is mentioned in the sacred books of the East, volume number 11, page number 36. Mahaparinibbana Sutta, Chapter number two, verse number 32, it says that as for the Buddha, there are no exoteric or esoteric teachers. And O oh Ananda, the Tathagatas, that means the teachers, have nothing like a closed fist. We cannot keep the knowledge to ourselves. It should be proclaimed. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whatever he received as a wahi from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he proclaimed to the whole of humanity. And he told his disciples that never keep it away from humankind. Proclaim it and spread it. That's what's mentioned in the prophecy. There's nothing like esoteric or exoteric. Everything should be told to the humankind. It's further mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures, in the sacred books of the East, 
volume number 11, page number 97, Mahapari Nibbana Sota, chapter number 5, verse number 36. It says that as Buddha had a servitor by the name of Ananda, so shall the Maitri have a servitor. And we know from history, from the series of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the servitor of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Anas. May Allah be pleased with him. Nadilawan, who was the son of Malik. May Allah be pleased with him. And Hazrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he says, that my parents gave me to the Prophet at the age of eight. And his mother told the Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, take this to be your servant. And Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, that the Prophet referred to him as his son, or the little beloved one. And we know how that Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he always stood by the Prophet in times of peace and in times of war, in times of safety, in times of danger. He can very well be compared to Ananda. We know when the mad elephant rushes at Buddha, Ananda stood by Buddha. Similarly, we know how that Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, in the Battle of Uhud, at the age of 11, even when the enemies were close to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hadrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, stood by the Prophet. Even in the Battle of Hunayn, at the age of 16, when the enemies who were archers surrounded the Prophet, yet Hadrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he stood by the Prophet. He can very well be compared like Ananda when the mad elephant rushes at Buddha and Ananda stays by Buddha. So this is the fulfillment of the prophecy that the Maitri will have a servitor. It is further mentioned in the Gospel of Buddha, page number 214, that this Maitri to come, this other Buddha to come, will have six qualities. The first is, he will get enlightenment at night. Number two, he will become bright when he gets enlightened. Number three, he will die a natural death. Number four, he will die at night. Number five, when he dies, he'll become bright. And number six, once he dies, he will never be seen in the bodily form in this earth again. These six qualities and criteria befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first wahi he got was at night time. As I mentioned earlier, the Quran says in Surah Dukhan, chapter 44, verse number 2 and 3, and Surah Qadr, chapter 97, verse number 1, that the Quran was revealed in the night of power. It further says, he will be lit up. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had become bright. He was enlightened. It further says he will die a natural death. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a natural death. Point number four, he will die at night. And we know from the hadith of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, that she did not have oil in the lamp. So she borrowed the oil from the neighbor, indicating it was night when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. It further says that he will become bright at the time of death. And Hadrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, says that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked bright when he died. And the last point is that when he dies, he will never be seen in the bodily form on this earth. I know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he died in the bodily form, he was buried in Medina, and he was never seen in bodily form again. All these criteria mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's further mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures in the sacred books of the East, volume number 10, page number 68, it says that the Tattagattas, they are only preachers. That means the Buddha has to come. They can only preach. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ghashia, chapter number 88, verse number 21, Allah says to the Prophet, your job is to deliver the message. Giving hidayah is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's further mentioned in Sacred Books of the East, volume number 10, page number 67, that to go to paradise, even your good deeds are responsible. Your good deeds are responsible for you to go to paradise. And Allah says in Surah Al-Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, Wal asr. Inna fi Illa amanu wa bil which means, by the token of time, man is very in a state of loss, except those who have faith, those who have righteous deed, those who exhort people to truth, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. One of the criteria to go to Jannah is amal salihat, righteous deed, which is mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures. And further, it's mentioned in Dhammapad, Matta Yasutta, 
151. It gives the criteria of the Buddha, the final Maitri to come. It says that he will be a mercy to humankind. He will be gentle. He will be an example to humankind. He says he will be kind. And he will be truthful. So all these criteria befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was in brief regarding Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Buddhist scriptures. Interesting video. If you ask me what I thought maybe three years ago, I would have just rolled my eyes and said he's ex exaggerating things. But what I admire about Dr. Zakir Naik is that he's not speaking from here saying, where someone just told him something, where someone just heard something from him and told him the information. No, that's not the case. The case here is that he's actually read these scriptures, not just these scriptures, but other scriptures from other religions as well. And he's making sense of certain things that have been said in those scriptures to make us understand. My issue here is that people don't want to get educated. I mean, if you're so bothered by Mo uh, Dr. Zaki saying Muhammad is the last messenger, what, what, he's been mentioned in these other religions. Why not get that information, read about it, and see what you would discover yourself and interpret the scriptures in whatever way you like? Because we can read the same book, but we'll get would get different messages from that book he's explained how he sees things maybe you see something as well let me know what you guys think otherwise this was very very interesting make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video